Clara Macedo is a middle-aged woman looking for a job as a nanny. In the opening scene, she arrives at Anna's home for an interview. It is revealed that Anna is pregnant with a child, but she has no immediate family members to take care of her. So, she wants Clara to stay at the apartments at all times. The latter agrees right away, but when the interview commences, her responses aren't that good. It's evident that she doesn't have any experience in taking care of babies. This disappoints Anna slightly, but she decides to give the woman a chance. As they are talking, Anna suddenly gets a sharp pain in her stomach and starts to panic. She fears that she is going to pass out, but Clara quickly springs into action and uses a shoulder rubbing technique that eases her pain. This finally impresses Anna, and she announces that Clara has secured the job. She also gives the woman a house tour, saying she can eat whatever she wants at any time. From the very next morning, Clara gets to work and does all her tasks diligently. She cares for the house as if it is her own. In the evening, while cleaning Anna's room, she discovers a pistol in a drawer. However, Clara puts it back and doesn't think much of it. Several days go by, during which the two get closer and start living like best friends. Clara helps Anna with everything and never leaves her side. They even go to the hospital together for Anna's monthly checkup. The doctor claims that the baby is a boy and is perfectly healthy, much to her delight. A few days later, Clara walks up to Anna drinking and dancing alone. The latter reveals that it is her birthday, but none of her family members have called her. It turns out that Anna was supposed to marry a man but she got pregnant with someone else's child. Her father brought her to the city, forcing her to get an abortion, but she refused to do so. Since then, her mother, along with all of her family and friends, have cut ties with her. Her wedding also got cancelled and she moved to the city. Anna says that she doesn't care about them anymore, but Clara senses her sadness. The two then talk for a while and drown their sorrows. At her next doctor's appointment, Anna is informed that her blood pressure is higher than usual, so she should cut meat from her diet. Following that, Clara only cooks vegetarian meals for her. She also checks Anna's blood pressure every day to make sure she is healthy. One night, Clara leaves Anna on her own for the first time and goes to get a drink. When she returns, Anna is in front of the refrigerator looking for something to eat. As she gets closer, Anna starts to kiss her passionately. Clara freezes in shock when suddenly Anna bites her and scratches her back. The confused maid quickly retreats and sees that blood is all over Anna's face. The shocking thing is that the pregnant woman doesn't utter a word and simply goes to her room. The following morning, Anna doesn't remember anything that happened the previous night. She simply carries on with her day as if nothing has happened. Clara also doesn't say a word, assuming her mistress was just sleepwalking. As the two engage in small talk, Anna reveals that she has chosen the name Joel for her son. Some days later, Clara is making a pregnancy chart when she realizes that Anna's sleepwalking could have a connection with the fact it was a full moon night. Time passes, and on the next full night, Anna wakes up covered in sweat because of a nightmare. Clara comes to her side to help her, but the two strangely get attracted to one another and start making out. Once they are done, they fall asleep in the same bed. At midnight, Anna abruptly opens her eyes, which have turned light brown. She gets up and starts to sleepwalk again. This time, Clara doesn't stop her. Instead, she follows her outside. Anna slowly exits the house and walks through the streets. She only comes to a halt when she sees a cat in front of her. What she does next makes Clara screech in terror. Anna attacks the cat and devours it alive. The next morning, she once again doesn't remember a thing and acts as if everything is fine. But Clara knows that she is dangerous and can pounce at any time. So, in order to keep Anna at bay, she cuts her palm and pours blood into her breakfast. The pregnant mistress devours the dish in an instant, claiming it is delicious. She appears to be drawn towards flesh and blood. After a while, Clara finally brings up Anna's sleepwalking habit and reveals that she attacked her last month. This makes Anna burst into tears, so Clara decides to not talk about the cat. She then explains that these things are common during pregnancy, and it will eventually go away. I don't know about that one. At night, Clara pours flour around Anna's bed so that she can know if she sleepwalks. But to her delight, she wakes up in the morning and notices that the flour hasn't moved. Clara is now sure that Anna doesn't have any sleep disorder, and she only sleepwalks on full moon nights. Later that day, the two sing a lullaby together. As they talk, Anna opens up about the father of her son. She was on vacation last year when she met 
met a man named George. She instantly felt drawn to him, and at the end of the night, went on a drive with him. The two got intimate with each other, but the next morning, she woke up alone in the car. While looking for George, she saw a pair of glowing eyes in the dark. Curious, George? Scared, she shot at the creature with a pistol she found in George's car. It ran away to the woods, and she returned home. After finding out that she is pregnant, Anna went back to look for him, but no one in the town knew who George was. Eventually, she gave up and returned home. As Anna finishes up her story, she becomes emotional, so Clara comforts her once again. Following this, we are taken to the next full moon night, where Anna suddenly starts whimpering in pain because of a terrible cramp. Clara quickly calls the doctor, but before she can explain the situation, Anna's baby tears her stomach apart and emerges from it. The impact causes Anna to die instantly. Clara is in shock and doesn't know what she should do. She looks at Anna's limp body and then at the boy she just gave birth to. It is clear that the infant isn't a human being, but a werewolf that has killed its own mother. Horrified, Clara brings out the pistol, but she cannot bring herself to shoot the infant. Since she cannot stay at the house either, she takes the kid with her and runs away from there. At first, Clara plans to throw the werewolf in a ditch, but then her maternal instincts kick in and she decides against it. Instead, she brings him to her old house, declaring him her son. The movie then jumps to seven years later. Clara has named the boy Joel, as per his biological mother's wish. To suppress his werewolf urges, she has never fed him any kind of meat. Clara also loves him like her own son and is living a happy life. However, on every full moon night, she locks him in a secret room with his hands chained to the wall. The following day, Joel always has a body full of hair and long nails like a werewolf, but they shave everything off and pretend like nothing happened. They have kept this a secret from the rest of the world. Yet. The kid is curious by nature. He always asks Clara about his biological mother, but Clara dismisses the matter, saying that she found him by a river. One day, Clara has to leave for urgent work, so she asks her landlady, Amalia, to babysit Joel for the day. Unfortunately, the innocent woman notices that Joel is skinny, so without asking anyone, she makes him chicken. The boy consumes it without any hesitation, despite the fact that he is having meat for the first time. When Clara returns home at night, she shockingly sees Joel with a picture of Anna. He apparently found it in her belongings, and is now questioning her about the person in the picture. Clara nervously makes excuses, saying that she was about to tell him the truth. She then reveals that Anna is his mother, who died while giving birth. Hearing this, Joel becomes upset as he was lied to for this long. Unlike his usual nature, he then starts getting aggressive and yells at her. I don't want to go to my room! This expectedly scares Clara, so she locks him in the secret bedroom, fearing that he will turn into a werewolf. After this, she approaches the landlady and asks what the boy did all day. When Amalia reveals that she fed him meat, Clara finally learns why he has been acting weird as of late. Later, Joel's friends, Amanda and Mauricio, come to visit him, but Clara sends them away, saying that he is asleep. She then goes inside the secret room the next morning, and calmly explains to Joel that he looks like his mother, and has habits similar to her. Like Anna, he also likes to dance and sing. At this point, the boy has calmed down a bit, and he curiously asks about his father, but Clara says that she doesn't know anything about him. Hearing this response, Joel once again becomes mad, and refuses to talk to her. At school, he asks his friend Mauricio to help him look for his father. As the kids are innocent and inexperienced, they decide to start with the busiest building in the town, the local shopping mall. Later, when Clara comes to pick Joel up from school, she is shocked to see him missing. She rushes to Mauricio's father and inquires about her child, but the man just says that they must be playing somewhere. Clara gets more worried by the second, because it is a full moon night, and after what happened the day before, Joel has become very dangerous. One of her neighbors suggests that Clara call the police immediately, but she doesn't do it, fearing their secret would be revealed. On the other hand, Mauricio and Joel hide inside the mall until it closes, then get out to look for his father. However, since it is a full moon night, Joel unexpectedly turns into a werewolf and attacks his friend. Mauricio tries to run away through an elevator, but he is eventually caught. The poor boy is then torn into pieces and devoured completely by the beast. Later at night, Joel returns home, still in his werewolf form. When Amalia sees him, she becomes frightened and assumes that he is possessed. However, Clara mentions that Joel is a werewolf and that this is his true form. When Amalia still doesn't calm down, Clara injects her with an anesthetic and knocks her out. The danger is averted for the moment, but Clara knows that she cannot stay in the house for long. So, she decides to run away 
with Joel first thing in the morning. Unfortunately, the messed up boy foils her plans once again as he locks her in the secret bedroom and heads out. The entire day, he carries out his usual routine by attending his classes and hanging out with his friends. At night, he goes to Amanda's place to dance with her. The two have a wonderful time, and it appears as if they are in love with each other. However, their happy moment comes to an abrupt end when Joel begins to transform. At the same time, Clara is finally freed by a stranger. She runs to get her son and finds him about to attack Amanda. Without any hesitation, Clara shoots the werewolf in the leg and brings him back home. However, as she's dressing his wound, several angry locals surround the house. They have learned that the boy is a werewolf and that he is the one who took Mauricio's life. As the locals bang on their door, Clara and Joel hold hands, preparing to face them together. The movie ends as Joel lets out one final howl.